between the holiday meetings, the holiday greetings, and the happy meetings, between the sound of familiar carols and the smell of favorite aromas, presents and people, family and food, turkey and stuffing, Santa and elves, snowmen and magic hats, the Griswolds and Ralphie Parker, Rudolph and Buddy the Elf, Bing Crosby and Mariah Carey. They're all in our minds right now because Christmas is coming. Most of all, though, the Messiah is coming. Scripture says a Savior has been born. The Word has become flesh. And in the words of John the Baptist, it's our responsibility to prepare the way of the Lord. And all people will see God's salvation. With all that we've learned to pack into the four weeks between Thanksgiving and December 25th, there never seems to be enough time or energy to celebrate the Messiah. Honestly, I don't think we've taken Christ out of Christmas. We've left him in Christmas. We've just buried him under the layers of other things. Other things we're also trying to celebrate, like snow and family and presents, decorations and traditions. Tonight, our goal is not so much to decorate the sanctuary. We can do that any old way. Our goal is not to put Christ back into Christmas alongside all the other important or seemingly unimportant aspects of Christmas celebrations. Our goal tonight is to see Christ already present in Christmas. Because we that are here tonight already know that real light and life Joy and salvation can only be found in the child born in a manger in Bethlehem. Our goal tonight is not to strip Christmas. Our goal tonight is to recognize that everywhere we look and everything we do reminds us of the Messiah who came to save. And the Messiah who will return one day for those of us who trust him. Every wreath, every candle, every light, every tree, every ornament, Every stocking, every gift, every song. Everything this Christmas should remind us that Christ came for us. Let's pray. Father, in the stillness and silence of this moment, we reflect upon the gift that you have given. The night that Jesus was born, the angels appeared to the shepherds and declared good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. Because that night in Bethlehem, a Savior had been born, who is Christ the Lord. So, Father, it's in his name that we gather together, and it's in his honor that we think about these traditions and how they reflect eternal life, eternal joy, and all those things we look forward to when Christ returns. Father, this jumpstarts our season and turns our hearts towards you. Father, I pray this night be filled with worship. The wise men came from afar bearing gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh with one purpose, and that was to worship he who has been born king of the Jews. So, Father, tonight we ask you to allow us to set aside all other cares and concerns and focus only on the gift of your Son, Christ Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. The first ornament that we're going to look at tonight is the wreath. Of all the Christmas symbols, none is more familiar than the evergreen. Its use during the season is common throughout the world. Long before the birth of Christ, evergreens were used as a symbol of eternal life. Now, as a Christian symbol, the evergreen represents Jesus Christ, who is our eternal life. In John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says, And this is the record, that God hath given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has the life. He does not have the Son does not have life. The wreath being round represents eternal life because there is no end to the circle and no beginning. It shows that God was, always is, and always will be.
The Christmas poinsettia, the winter flowering plant, symbolizes eternal life and the birth of Christ. The star-shaped formation of red leaves brings to mind the star which was shown at that first Christmas. In a less joyous sense, the color of the flower is blood red. This reminds us of all the male infants killed by Roman soldiers as King Herod sought to eliminate any threat to the throne. We sometimes forget this part of the story, but it was for this reason that Mary, Joseph, and the Christ child had to flee Egypt. The color of the flower also symbolizes the fact that the babe of Bethlehem's manger became the savior of the world as Christ shed his blood upon the cross of Calvary. The white poinsettias remind us of purity, holiness, and sinless perfection of Jesus, our Savior. Colors of blue and purple have always symbolized royalty. These colors with fine linen were a status symbol and considered a valuable possession. These colors were also used in the precious things offered by the people for the tabernacle and the priestly robes, even used in the veil of the temple. When the soldiers mocked Jesus during his trial, they clothed him in purple and put a crown of thorns on his head. One day soon we will replace that crown of thorns with a kingly crown. So tonight we celebrate not only the birth of the Messiah, but the kingship of Christ. We welcome him as our Savior and our King. Come, come. saw the light and it was good. God divided the light from the darkness. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of of peace. I'm not sure everybody's singing. <laughs> so I know you know this one. So Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light to those who long have gone, guiding the
Today, the Christmas tree is the center of our festivities. Glittering with lights and ornaments, it's a part of the beauty and meaning of Christmas. But ancient peoples, including non-Jewish people in the Old Testament, decorated trees with gold and lights to worship false gods. Jeremiah 10, 2 through 5 says, For the practices of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest, and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with a hammer and nail so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. Likewise, the Greeks and Romans decorated trees to worship their gods. So the Christmas tree, more than any other symbol, should remind us of the danger of idolatry. This year, when you look at a Christmas tree, ask yourself, what God do I worship? Am I putting family or presents or decorations first in my Christmas? No. I worship the God who died on the tree. This tree became the light of the world. Oh, Christmas tree. decorations, some with sentimental value and others with spiritual importance. At this time, we ask that individual families come to hang ornaments on the tree while we welcome all kinds of decorations which represent your individual families within the church. We also have some items used to decorate which remind us of the true meaning of Christmas. We have decorations on the front pew if you all like to come by families and hang one on the tree.
us of Matthew 13 where Jesus says God is like a merchant's pearl. It costs everything to know him, but he is worth much more than anything in the world. The pearl of great price is our Lord Jesus, perfect, pure, and white. Angels are God's created messengers. They belong to his heavenly court and service. They devote, them, devote themselves to do his bidding. Their primary purpose is to praise and glorify him. They were present at his physical birth and his resurrection. And we know that they rejoice when a sinner comes to repentance. Mm -hmm. I invite the Stallings family to come and help hang our ornaments. to train as an athlete to gain his crown and God will reward him on the last day. As a victory wreath, the crown is the glory of Christ, the eternal life won by Christians who persevere. The star is one of the greatest symbols of Christmas because it was a star that heralded the birth of Christ. In Matthew chapter 2 we read, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea during the time of King Herod. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born, King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. The star reminds us of that first Christmas when the star appeared in the sky and led wise men to find the baby born to be King of the Jews. That star led them to worship the king, and it reminds us to do the same. Kings of Orient are bearing gifts we travel of far fields and fountain hoar and mountain falling yonder storm. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward Many other decorations are used. Snow and ribbons, snowmen, reindeer. These bring us together as a family. We celebrate togetherness. We celebrate our love for one another. While we don't advocate in eliminating any of these traditions or decorations, we do encourage that once again to look at Christ in all we do during this holy season. One of the most heartwarming expressions of Christmas is the nativity. <coughs> it speaks of the mystery of God's wisdom, why God chose to send his son into our world as a baby of humble birth, born in common surroundings we do not know. What we do know is that God reached out to all people, the poor and wealthy, the simple and wise, the powerless and the powerful. All who found him knelt in humility before him. Knowing God is possible because he came to us at our level. Whenever we see a nativity scene, we find ourselves with Mary and Joseph, with the shepherds, with the wise men. We find ourselves bowing before the manger, overwhelmed by God's expression of love, his gift in coming to us. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he Oh! Uh -huh. 
Again, our hope is that you celebrate this Christmas season with your family and friends each time you see these many symbols of Christmas that will remind you to celebrate the Christ who came and the Christ who is coming again. Christmas is all about Christ. It is about God incarnate. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It is about the glory of God. And I hope that we all take time every day to reflect on the meaning of Christmas the New Testament writers understood that he who was in the form of God did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but was willing to humble himself, to take on the form of a servant and endure even death on the cross. The crucifixion of Jesus was the will and act of God with eternal significance. At the simplest level, the crucifixion of Jesus was the means by which God provided salvation and the forgiveness of sins. The cross is the supreme example of the demonstration of God's love to man, the greatest gift of all. The four points of the cross remind us to take the message of his love and forgiveness to the all four corners of the world. As we close tonight, let's focus on God's Christmas tree, the cross of Jesus. Underneath that tree, there are gifts of cleansing from all sin, gifts of forgiveness, peace with God, and the gift of of eternal life. You want me to, let's make them work for you, won't you? Sure. Let's all stand and sing <laughs> joy to the world. Joy to the world. up high. I've got a ladder in the back too. So if you'll hang around and help us finish out our tree uh, before you go, do remember that Jesus Christ is God's gift. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. He simply gave it of his own love. Let's pray. Then come help us finish and we'll be finished with it. Father, we thank you for the gift of Christ and for the meaning of the season. All the symbols that remind us of eternity Remind us that you are the creator and you are the giver of life. Father, that we have redemption in you 
And Father, I pray that as opportunities come our way this Christmas season, we will share that message with others who need to know hope in this dark world. We thank you for the light that you give, the light that is Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Christmas tree, how richly God has decked thee. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how richly God has decked thee. Thou bidst us true and faithful be, and trust in God unchangingly. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree.